Hello, I'm Rupert Vandervel and welcome back to my channel. I've always been a bit of a reader and I've always enjoyed owning and collecting books and not just photography books. I have all my life been a fan of reading novels and while some people consider time spent reading fiction time wasted, I don't and I found much to inspire me in literature. Indeed, some authors and their books have resulted in projects and pictures that I have created that might not have come into being if I've not been inspired by their written word and the world's conjured up by them. I've talked before about this. When reading a novel, story or poem, we're forced to use our mind's eye to create the physical space we're being told about and colour it accordingly. Part of the enjoyment of reading is that we're all different and so we'll all imagine a described scene and its contents in our own personal way. For me, the novels from authors such as J.G. Ballard, Philip K. Dick and Vladimir Nabokov are first off the shelf when looking for a creative hit from literature. Sometimes just the act of holding the book and examining the cover, flicking through it and thinking about its content is enough to get the creative juices flowing. Having the physical thing is like having a tactile creative resource that can engage the imagination. Of course, part of the pleasure of owning books is that they are always there. Displayed in the home, they are a constant reminder of other worlds that exist beyond the everyday. Each book just waiting to be open to the inquiring mind. And for me, the pleasure of owning books is not just the joy of reading them and the creative ideas that I gain from them, but also the beauty of them as physical objects. Their covers, their design, the paper, the typography. I get quite a buzz from being in bookshops and browsing the covers and the various editions that they come in. If I want to buy an older book, whether a classic or something that has been in publication for some time and I don't like the cover, I will hunt for another edition, perhaps some 10, 20 or more years ago. To this extent, I will judge a book by its cover. I was recently sorting through my literary library after putting some new shelves up and notice how many books had covers illustrated by photographs. I have obviously inclined towards them over the years due to my interest and occupation. But I noticed there are a number of volumes whose covers had been decorated with pictures taken by some of the great street photographers of our times. There were those photos that were immediately recognisable and those which I needed to check the back cover credit for. Now, of course, using photographs on front covers is nothing new. And there are thousands of examples of moody images on all kinds of books across many genres. Crime, thrillers and mystery novels being the most common examples. I've even been fortunate to have my own images used in such a way. And it can be quite a good little earner when a publisher comes off to one of your images to use on hopefully the next blockbuster. So this discovery of famous photographs being used on front covers made me want to look at it a bit more closely and have a look at what has been chosen and how it's been used. When designing a cover for a novel and using an existing image, because of the book's format and because of the typography used on the title, you're sometimes going to have to crop the image to fit, especially if you wanted the image to fill the entire cover. I became intrigued in this and was interested to see how designers went about it. After all, when we are composing our pictures in camera at the time of shooting and perhaps when cropping in, say, Photoshop afterwards, it's a very important decision. Let's take a look at some examples where well-known street photographs have been used on front covers and whether we think they've been successful or not. Plus, let's talk a little bit about the books themselves. I'm going to start with many people's favourite street photographer, Saul Leiter. Here's a great example of his more abstract work used on the cover of a book by another Saul, Saul Bellow. This is Saul Bellow's short story collection, and I have to say that I think it's not only a fine collection of writing, but it's also a fine example of how an image like Mr. Leiter's can be used. Saul Bella was a Canadian-American writer and he was a winner of many of the top awards for his novels. One of them was called Seize the Day, this time with a Vivian Meyer street picture on the cover, which I think works quite well. With this design, no cropping of the image was required as it's reproduced here in its original form. Vivian Meyer is largely known for her black and white street pictures taken with a roly flex. Penguin, the publisher of Saul Bellow's work, were obviously taken with them as they went with another of her pictures for the cover of The Victim. However, an example of her colour street work can be seen on the cover of Henry Miller's Nexus, the final volume of his semi-autobiographical trilogy. Now, Henry Miller isn't everyone's idea of the perfect read, and his style has certainly had its detractors. Nonetheless, his writing has long had its admirers too. I think this Vivian Meyer photograph makes a beautiful image. I've always been drawn to it. Super use of colour and that oh-so-enigmatic pose. 
I featured this image in a video I did about the power of hands and their gestures. The book follows the author protagonist last month in New York. Trapped in a bizarre menage a trois with his fiery wife Mona and her lover Stasia, he finds his life descending into chaos. In the picture we see the woman's hands in an idle moment, unoccupied with nothing to do. They may of course subconsciously be communicating a very specific message. They almost look a little awkward with the woman not really knowing how to hold or present them. They are almost like spare parts. And we find the same image used again on the front of a William Boyd novel, The Dreams of Bethany Melmoth, a collection of short stories that depict the random encounters that bring the past bubbling to the surface. I'm quite a fan of William Boyd and I think his novel Any Human Heart is a masterpiece. I think he suffered a decline in recent years, but has struck back with his novel The Romantic. In his novel from 1984 titled Stars and Bars, we see Saul Leiter's work appearing again this time a more conventional street shot from 1955. This story, described by The Guardian as spittingly shrewd and engaging, with an extra and uneasy little something fretting away at the ribald content, was made into a film in the 1980s starring Daniel Day-Lewis. Patrick Modiano's Missing Person, winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature, in which a man is portrayed in pursuit of the identity he lost in the murky days of the Paris occupation during the war, has been published in a few editions over the years, a couple of times featuring a different street picture on the cover. This Penguin Modern Classics edition featured the work of the Hungarian French photographer Brassai, who created countless iconic images of 1920s Parisian life, in particular his night pictures that captured the grittier aspects of the city and its inhabitants. Another edition features the photography of Wolfgang Suschitsky, an Austrian-born British documentary photographer. On the cover of another book by Modiano, this time a collection of novellas, French photographer Willy Ronis's work from the early 1950s was used. But let's return to the work of both Henry Miller and Brassai again to see how the two came together in print. Quiet Days in Clichy is a celebration of love, art and the bohemian life at a time when the world was simpler and slower, and Henry Miller, an obscure penniless young writer in Paris. On the cover we have Brassai's picture from 1933 of a couple drinking in a Parisian bar. It's long been said that Brassai set up the pictures from the series he did of the city's nightlife, but to me that doesn't matter because they tell the story of Paris at night from that time so well. And here on the cover of Miller's Aller Retour in New York comes an image from the New York skyline from Brassai's visit to America in 1957. Brassai's pictures of this time were in stark contrast to his Paris work and featured very modern scenes of American life. I recommend the book Brassai in America, a great snapshot of the time. Our final Henry Miller cover leads us to the work of another great and sadly recently departed photographer, Elliot Erwitt. This brilliant image, taken in New York in 1955, is a beautiful capture. The composition, the mood, the moment are all exquisite and it works beautifully on this book cover. It intrigues and entices one in with a desire to know what is happening between the covers. I love this one from Elliot Erwitt too, on AJ Liebling's Between Meals. Gorgeous tones and super rich blacks make it a mouth-watering prospect. Black and white photography done to perfection. A moody black and white scene can be found illustrating the cover of an edition of Albert Camus' The Outsider. This is a simple and effective design. The picture is by Jacques Henri Lartigue, known mainly for his pictures of car racing and French fashion models. However, here we find him in a much moodier style. An interesting story I heard about Lartigue recently is that he was quite the precocious young photographer. He was given a handheld Brownie No. 2 camera when he was 8 years old, and he started to take candid pictures of his family and friends. In this picture he has balanced the camera on something whilst in the bath, and pointed it directly at himself. He called to his mother to come in and press the shutter for him, thereby taking what was probably one of the first ever selfies. The Austrian and Magnum photographer Inga Morath's work features on the covers of Julian Green's Paris and Joanne Greenberg's I Never Promised You a Rose Garden. As well as portraiture, Morath worked as a stills photographer on numerous film sets. I Never Promised You a Rose Garden is the story of a 16 year old who retreats from reality into the bondage of a lushly imagined but threatening kingdom and her slow and painful journey back to sanity. Heavy theme it seems, I've not read it but I love the cover image. And from there we'll dive into some sumptuous colour photography from Harry Gryart, another firm street photography favourite. 
The current series of detective novels by the Belgian author Georges Simenon, featuring the character Jules Maigre, have been recently illustrated using Dryart's work. Simenon was a prolific writer and there are 75 novels featuring Maigre, and I must say I really like the use of Harry Dryart's work on the covers. I have read a few of them and they are entertaining as crime novels go and perfect escapism. I like this too, Don DeLillo's White Noise in collaboration with Gregory Crudson's stunning street scene. It really draws you in and is a great example of how you would want to look more closely at something you might not consider at first. To finish, we'll bring the photographic imagery more up to date with Christopher Anderson's striking image of a smash bowl of cherries that adorns the cover of Yoko Agawa's Revenge. Murderers and mourners, mothers and children, lovers and innocent bystanders, locked in the embrace of an ominous and darkly beautiful web. Their fates all converge through the 11 stories featured here. Great combination of words and image. And my own work features on the cover of Mick Herron's London Rules. And naturally, I think it's a great combination. Aside from the beauty of their covers, for me, paperbacks are the nicest to own. They are so simple, so fit for purpose. I don't particularly like hardbacks and leather bound books are ugly and uninspiring. Let me know in the comments some of your favourite books with photographic covers and whether you have found some great street photography that's been used effectively. Thanks for watching. Check out my book Fine Art Street Photography for tips and help on how to make dramatic and striking pictures in and around the urban environment. Links are in the description to the video below.